Hello. Uh, I've been wanting to make a video about my experiences with my Zappi and my new solar PV, which I got installed um, earlier this year. So I've had my I've had my EV for a little over a year now, uh, and I've had a Zappi for about the same amount of time. Been really happy with that, uh, using it with um, you know Octopus Go, uh, and charging it overnight. Uh, on the over peak power that's been working really really well uh, then i got my solar installed um, in january this year uh, and came with a battery 5.8 kilowatt hour battery and everything was fine you know i got it set up was using eco plus and the first day or two that i got really good sunny weather i discovered that it completely discharged the battery uh, it basically discharged the battery into the car, uh, leaving me no, uh, leaving me no power for the for the house. Uh, so I hit the forums, started doing some reading, uh, and discovered that that's a pretty known problem, um, and it's to do with the way uh, the clamps are set up and stuff on the inverter. So what I wanted to do in this video was I just wanted to outline the setup. That, uh, that, that I ended up with initially. Um, the steps I took to try to mitigate the problem, to, to, to try and stop the Zappi discharging the battery, and finally where I ended up in terms of an electrician coming and changing the wiring. Uh, so this problem essentially went away. So this is my initial setup, which I ended up with after the guys had come to install the Zappi. Uh, so basically the power comes in from the grid, through the meter, goes into the consumer unit, the Zappi got added on, and that connects into the uh, EV. It's a pretty straightforward. Um, the little green block here is the CT clamp. So the CT's clamp, the CT clamp's job is to monitor the power coming in and out uh, of the house. So the Zappi uses that for two things. So the first one is to make sure it doesn't consume more power than the main fuse is rated so in my house that's a uh, 100 amps that got upgraded uh, when i had the house rewired uh, before we moved in um, so that just means that we tell the zappy in the settings that the most that uh, the house can use is 100 amps so it will make sure that when it's charging the car it doesn't exceed the 100 amps so it, it, it will kind of throttle itself up and down I don't think it's unlikely to happen. Uh, the other thing is that it also monitors when you've got excess uh, power. So if you've got solar panels, this will monitor how much power is flowing back into the grid and then it can decide to send that into the car. So in this current scenario, which I had this time last year, I had no solar panels, so there was no problems. Then my solar panel guys arrived and what they did was they added uh, an inverter and the battery and they connected that into the consumer unit like so. We also then added another CT clamp here and that was connected into the inverter. So now the problem. So what I found was Typically, it all worked really well. Um, any surplus going to the grid, the Zappi would, would mop up um, and push it into the car. But sometimes what would happen was the inverter would start discharging the battery. And this, I think, was happening because they're seeing the same information and they're both kind of fighting against each other. So all the Zappi knows really is how much is being exported and imported, the little tidbits of information it has. And the inverter is the same, it kind of knows what the load is. Uh, the inverter's job is to try to minimize input and output from the grid, so that's what it will try to do. So I think what I was seeing was once we had some excess solar, so if we had a kilowatt, two kilowatt, we might have said two, so let's say we had two kilowatts coming from the panels. Um, assume the house is just consuming nothing because that's kind of easier. 
Uh, that would be getting exposed out, then Zappy would say, ooh, yeah, I've, I've, got, I've seen some, uh, some excess, I'm going to start sending that into the car. So it would start. Uh, and then the house would see, as the solar fluctuated up and down, the Zappy's kind of what it's, uh, it's outputting changes, but it doesn't change instantaneously. So the Zappy has a kind of a waiting period where it will count down, defaults to about 30 seconds. So once it sees some surplus going to the grid, it will wait 30 seconds before it turns itself on. And that's to kind of make sure that it's not clicking its power in and off repeatedly for no reason. Because if the clouds are moving overhead, you kind of want some steady surplus before the Zappy will turn on. But the grid, sorry, the inverter is always trying to minimise the amount of power uh, being imported. So it's always trying to balance the import and export at kind of zero. So we always want what's coming in from the grid to be zero. So what would happen is the Zappy would start pulling the power. If there was any fluctuation in the solar, the Zappy would, sorry, the inverter would then see load. So let, let, let's say, we'll use some crude figures. So let's say we've got two kilowatts from the panels and the Zappy starts pushing two kilowatts into the car. Uh, you get a big cloud formation moves overhead. The output from that drops to one. The Zappy will then see the surplus drop to one, but the inverter Sorry, the surplus will go negative because we have to start pulling a kilowatt. The inverter will then see, ah wait, there's power being drawn. So it will start discharging the battery to meet that new one kilowatt load. So we've got a kilowatt coming from the panels, then we've got a kilowatt coming from the battery. And then that meets the two kilowatt load. So what really should happen is that the Zappy will go, oh, actually, there's not enough surplus, so I'll just throttle back and I, and I won't send as much power into the car. But once the battery starts discharging and this drops to zero again, we're in a feedback loop. So the car will see there's a surplus. If the cloud comes out again, this might change to two. The battery is still discharging, so we'll now have three kilowatts coming from the inverter, two going into the car, so we have a surface of one. And if they don't get their act together, the Zappy will start pulling three kilowatts before the inverter has a chance to throttle back and stop discharging the battery. And then if the clouds go away and we've got one kilowatt, this then will increase to two kilowatts and essentially now we're stuck. We've kind of passed the point where the battery's discharging and the Zappy doesn't know any better. So that keeps happening. Uh, and then eventually that drops down to whatever your minimum is, in my case, 10%. Uh, painful, right? So to try and address this, Zappy introduced something or added something called an export margin. Uh, into their setup, so into the Zappy configuration, you can go in, you can set this export margin. So the theory behind the export margin is that the Zappy will always ensure there's a certain amount of surplus going to the grid. So you could set the Zappy, uh, say a 200 watt export margin. And the theory is that if you always have surplus going out, the inverter should never discharge the battery because it always sees there's excess. So if the, whatever the panels are producing, um, it should never need the battery to meet the demand because there's an excess. I hope, hopefully that makes sense. So if you imagine in our little scenario here, uh, as, I, as I've explained, what happens is the battery starts discharging as soon as the CT clamp from the inverter sees power coming in. So Zappy has set it up so that if there's always 200 watts going that way, 
the battery should never kick in. So let's take an example where we have two kilowatts coming from our panels. Again, nice sunny day. The Zappi will then only use 1.8 kilowatts. And in theory, we'll have 200 watts flowing into the grid as export. So the inverter should always go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm comfortably meeting all the demand because there's a surplus. But th that didn't work for me. Um, in practice, it, it got into the same kind of feedback loop uh, where they just kind of raced each other. So once there was a, a kind of a deviation and the battery started discharging, that was it. It never stopped discharging. Uh, and that's the same problem. So it didn't do anything for me. Um, so what other alternatives are there? So I was I pointed in the direction of a document on the, the My Energy forum. Um, that another user compiled because uh, they were experiencing a very similar problem to me. The export margin wasn't cutting it, so they went for a, a hardware solution. They basically rewired their Zappi. Uh, so I kind of read through that, got in touch with an electrician, um, found somebody who was willing to do it. Um, and I'm going to outline what that was, what, what that is. So as we've been discussing the problem, is that the inverter is seeing Zappi as load. So it's trying to meet the Zappi's demand by using both the solar panels and the battery. So what we want to do is to effectively break the Zappi away so that it's not part of the load that the inverter sees. And the only way to do that is to rewire uh, the feed coming into the house. So I'm just going to take away some of this or wipe the meat. I just need to make some, some space in the Ford. So I'll take that away. I'll disconnect the Zappi. I'll leave the inverter connected to the consumer unit as it is. So what we want to end up with is power comes in from the grid. We've got our meter as usual. Then we've got something called a Henley block which is a big heavy duty uh, connector. So the live comes in there. We've got one feed goes in there and then the other feed zips across here and down into the zappy. Now we also need to rearrange the CT clamps. So as ever, we need a CT clamp for the zappy that sees all the power coming into the house. So that essentially stays exactly where it is on the mains. And the main change then we can drop a CT clamp in there so that the inverter now only sees the load coming in from the house. So that's the kettles, the washing machines, anything that the house is using will register on this CT clamp so the inverter can then do what it needs to do to meet that load. You've put the washing machine on and I will discharge the battery, whatever. So that's how it will work. Um, the Zappi then is completely separate. So if the Zappi is turned on, the inverter is essentially oblivious to the fact it doesn't know what's happening. So the upshot of that is that any solar surplus that's going out is completely excluding the Zappi and it, it only takes into account what surplus from the consumer unit versus the inverter. Um, and it means then that when the Zappi switches on, and starts absorbing any of that surplus, the inverter doesn't know. Uh, so that's kind of where we want to end up. Um, I think it's going to be fine, it should work. Um, can't see any problems with it. Uh, I just need some slight rewiring to get us there. So the electrician is due to come today. So he will install probably a Henley block um, to divide the live. We'll move the uh, EV breaker into its own box and he'll also add a breaker for the eddy. And once that's done, we'll be able to reposition this clamp and hopefully stop the 
battery drain. So the electrician has started um, putting everything in. So we're going to have a very small consumer unit there with a Henley block above it. Electrician is all done. So we've got um, power coming in that runs down into the Henley block and then splits off into two. So we've got one feed going into a new consumer unit and the existing feed going up into the existing consumer unit. Did I say existing? New consumer unit. Um, so I've moved the inverter clamp. So that's now only monitoring the power going into the house. And it's now been isolated from um, the Zappi, which is the EV. And there's the new fuse for the Eddy. The Zappi clamp stays exactly where it is and that's on the main feed coming into the house so that that catches everything uh, which is exactly what I want um, and now if we zoom over to the eddy um, okay this is not great so it's stopped but you can see that there's basically no export and if I run across to the Zappi, you can hopefully see there that we've got 3.2 kilowatts going into the car, 3.6 there. Um, but the export is pretty close to zero, which is exactly what I want. So I call that a success. Back again, so pleased to say um, this has worked really, really well. Um, the changes that the electrician made have just been flawless. Um, I mean, uh, since I've had all this done, I've had an eddy put in as well. So that's doing hot water and that's connected in the same way. Um, so now both of these operate with no export margin. That's completely turned off and the uh, export to the grid yeah it's still exporting obviously when the when the battery's full etc and the car is full and hot water is full anything that surplus is going out but it hasn't discharged the battery um so I'm, re I'm really thrilled with the outcome so hopefully you found this this useful um if any questions comments or anything like that leave it in the comment section below um if you're in a similar situation you know maybe something like this can help I want to point out that Zappi uh, or My Energy have got a version five of the firmware currently being rolled out as we speak. Uh, that's apparently um, offers a massive improvement on how the export margin works. They've just improved the algorithm, I guess. Um, there has been some options in in the energy cell, the Zappi software, about avoiding battery drain and things, but. Uh, kind of now that I've done this, I, I kind of I won't have to rely on any software measures, so this will never kind of go wrong. Um, I suppose the only the only downside uh, is inside the inverters monitoring and the the kind of logging software on there, any graphs and stuff you see, it'll treat uh, all power that's not consumed by the house as exported to the grid, which isn't always the case. So if the Zappi is on or the Eddy is on, that's mopping up any of the surplus solar. So it's just something to know that even though this is telling you it's exported, you know, like 50 kilowatts, uh, 50 kilowatt hours to the grid or whatever, the Zappi and the Eddy, you know, might have mopped all of that up and you've actually exported nothing. So it, it does kind of impact the stats that you get from your app or whatever, but that's a small price to pay. Um, to stop you discharging the battery uh, and using up your, your free solar. Um, yeah, so as I've said, any comments, any questions, whatever you know, shoot them over. Um, if you'd like this video, you know, press the like button and yeah, please subscribe if you'd like to see similar videos on the subject. All right, thanks for watching.